Well, I'm sitting at my drawing board here again, and uh, there's quite a bit of time at the drawing board. I've got quite a bit of time left, actually. I've got the lines drawings of the boat on my working drawing complete, and uh, it's been complete for quite some time, but I haven't had a chance really to get back at it. So this is the first opportunity I've really had to to do a lot of work on the drawing board. But, uh, a lot of work has to be done because without the work on the drawing board, I wouldn't be able to build the boat. I mean, I could probably build it, but it wouldn't come out exactly the way I'd like it to come out. Basically, what I've done is I've taped a piece of paper down on the table right here on all four corners, and uh, basically the idea is I'm going to make a copy of my working drawings on to this drawing right here but I don't have a copy machine or a computer or anything like that. What I've got is a drawing board and a pencil and a few other items. Now, I've got this top sheet, my working drawings, what I've said I have had completed for quite some time, actually, on the drawing board right here. And uh, my, my paper that I'm going to copy onto underneath it right here. So basically what's going to happen is... I'm going to take, and uh, I've got kind of a hinge built into it over here. I've got this top sheet uh, taped down with two pieces of tape only on the left-hand side, but I'm not going to fold this one over the tape because what's going to happen is it's going to ruin the tape and it's going to start sliding around. So I put a couple of spline weights on that end of the paper, and I can fold this over the spline weights and not have it affect matters, you know, underneath it or on top or otherwise. So that's the whole idea of that. And uh, so, like I said, these are the working drawings. These are the drawings I've had on the drawing board for quite a while that I developed all these lines on. This set of lines was actually done from my memory of the shape of these boats, which I worked on an awful lot when I was quite a bit younger because they were just everywhere in boat yards. And, you know, all the fishermen had no reason, you know, they were just quite popular. And I learned what goes wrong with them and what does not go wrong with them and all those kinds of things. And uh, basically, I learned to like Novies. I really did. And, uh, you know, whether I like them or not, uh, Orca was a Nova Scotian built lobster boat when it was built. It was a boat named Warlock. And uh, basically, it was a Novi lobster boat original, and it was an old one because I can tell by the shape of it, the shear line of it. It doesn't have a, a swooping up shear line back aft, and it doesn't have a real big high bow. You know, it's got no flare to it whatsoever in the forward sections. And uh, it has a hollow keel. You know, which they did, they, you know, the, the main builders would, would take the keel and bend it or set it so that it would just go uphill all the way from, say, up forward here at its deepest point all the way to the transom and then have the shaft log coming out of that keel on an angle, you know, and then they'd have what I would call a skeg uh, underneath it, bolted up underneath it. Well, the Nova Scotians don't do it that way. They've got the keel slanted downhill, downhill, all the way aft, and then you have a stern post. They use a stern post. And uh, it's basically a hollow keel forward of that stern post. And uh, the shaft log, or the shaft itself, goes through the stern post. So that's just the basic difference between a, a main hull design. They're quite a bit different shape. You know, the Navy hulls were never, ever designed to be uh, a plane and hull whatsoever. They were a displacement hull. You only went a certain speed. You could put all the power in the world in them if you wanted to, and it really wouldn't make them go an awful lot faster, maybe another knot or something like that. But, you know, there was an optimum horsepower for them. And uh, this particular boat is going to have quite a good-sized diesel engine in it, probably a Yanmar. And uh, it's going to also have a stabilization system, you know, a gyro stabilization system in it. And... Uh, that's going to keep it nice and stable because what we're doing with this boat, we're pointing at the charter market with it here. We want this boat to be a legitimate charter boat and go out chartering and just be like probably one of the most well-known charter boats that there is today in the water. So, you know, or not today, but in the very short future, we're going to have it 
you know, complete and in the water. So that's what we're up to. Uh, like I said, these are the working drawings that I used. And uh, once I got them done, they were quite confusing, actually, because they have a lot of labeling all over it. They've got, you know, all kinds of different mistakes, you know, and erasing and dirt and, oh, my God, it's just a mess. And uh, basically, at one point in time, I tried to ink it in a little bit, and I tried using a pen, and uh, I was just having all kinds of bad luck. And if you make one mistake and go by where you're trying to uh, end, you're going to end up, you can't get rid of the line. So inking it wasn't something, you know, that I was going to be good at. And uh, I don't, how in the world architects did it, I really don't know, to tell you that truth. I've never worked with a marine architect at all on a drawing board. So all the things that I've learned on the drawing board, I learned myself, you know, by myself. And... Uh, they suit me fine, so that's what I was able to do was develop this set of lines. These are the working drawings, like I said, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these drawings over onto the sheet below it. Now, like I, said, I don't have a copy machine or anything like that, so basically what I'm going to do, first off, I'm going to prick a little hole right down here in the corner so that every time I fold it over, I can check that little hole right there to see if it ended up in the same spot, you know what I mean? And you can fold it over, you know, oh, oh, hundreds of times if you want to and end up in the same exact spot. But that's what you have holding it, is just the two pieces of tape on the left side. So I'm gonna use my dividers right here and I'm gonna take and say I'm gonna copy that shear line right there. Say I wanted to copy that shear line and uh, it's already going by where it belongs right here, so I'm going to end it right here. I'm going to take and prick a little prick point on the, on the uh, paper below it, right through this paper. This is exactly how I went about I say this is exactly how I went about making this entire drawing right here. This is a copied over set of lines drawings from my working drawings. And uh, I pricked through it, then I fold the working drawing over, and then I use my French curves and draw a line on those prick marks. So I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. You can see that I pricked through the working drawing onto the paper below it. And now I'm going to fold that paper over. And uh, I can see those prick marks on the paper below it that I had below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a French curve. And I'm going to take a reasonably hard pencil. The way to get the French curve to line up with these prick marks uh, you know, if you've got two hands on the French curve, you're moving it all over the place like this, it's a little bit tricky. So basically what you want to do is to be able to put your pencil in one of the prick marks. Then you can put your French curve up against the pencil, and you can slide it back and forth until that curvature kind of matches those three prick points right there. And I've got it like that. So I'm only going to draw a line part way. I'm not going to draw it all the way to the other end. I'm going to move up a, a prick point. And you see how that's done? Just like that. Now I'm going to move up again. Yeah. Now that is part of the shear line of the boat from the overhead view, or uh, what would be called the half bridge view. This is the half bridge view here because it shows half of the boat from overhead, right? And uh, then this is the profile view down here. It shows the boat from the side, right? And uh, basically, on this view, you're developing what they call your buttock lines. On this view, you're developing your water lines. And on the third, third view, you're developing your sections. Now, on the loft floor, the whole idea is to get the grid down. 
I've done a video on how to put the grid down, and uh, now I'm going to uh, show you how to use the whole setup. This drawing was drawn a half an inch to the foot, and uh, it's a little tricky a half inch to the foot because the lines are so crowded up against each other. If I had made it three quarters of an inch to the foot, uh, it would have been a lot easier for me to draw it. Uh, I have to say that there wasn't anything easy for me drawing these working drawings. Nothing. This was a very difficult thing to do, uh, for me to do. Uh, it's not something I've done my whole life long. I've done a couple of other sets of them, but uh, basically I've sat at a drawing board numbers of times, drawing all kinds of different details to boats and different things like that, and design work, and skiffs, and V-bottom skiffs, and dories, and you know, this is the first boat of this size, you know, or this shape that uh, I've had an opportunity to uh, sit at the drawing board with and, uh, and uh, actually design myself. You know, uh, these Novi hulls are, are a little bit tricky to draw because they have quite a bit of transition in the shape. You know, the shape up forward is very V-shaped. You know, it starts uh, getting wider and wider and deeper and then it starts developing a hollow keel about a midships, you know, and working its way aft and then back aft they're fairly flat, but they're drawn in at the transom. They don't need to have a lot of plane and surface back aft in order to, uh, in order to uh, get a little bit of lift and uh, maybe a little uh, a knot or two above what would be the computed hull speed. So that's what we've got going on right there. Now, I'm gonna take a scale rule here and I'm gonna be in the half grid view and uh, I am on station number four. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna do the shear line. I've got it on right here on station number four. I've got it on at a half an inch to the foot. That's one, two, three, four. That's five feet. And this is six, seven and a half. Well, to the center line, it's nine. 10, five feet, 10 inches. So I would pick that five feet, 10 inches up and put it in a table of offsets, which looks like this. It's just a, a table of all the dimensions on this whole drawing. The idea of a table of offsets is, is that you could take and get rid of these drawings completely, 100% completely and uh, work with that table of offsets and redraw the body plan, right? So if somebody wanted to build a boat like this, they don't have the patterns of the frames, you know, full size. So basically what you do is you work with the table of offsets and uh, you just do in reverse what, you just, what I just showed you how to do. And that is you take the dimension from the table of offsets and you put that onto the drawing board. So you put all your dimensions on the drawing board and then like I had said before, you know, transferring or copying a line, you know, to the one below. Basically, once you get all your dimensions on the drawing board here, all line by line, then you connect up the lines, you get the shear line. Then you move down and you do a water line, you know, the, uh, 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 two feet and three feet above the load water line. This is being the load water line. That's the shape of the boat that the boat floats on or floats very close to, hopefully, um, when it's in the water. You know, this first line is a water line one foot above the, uh, the load water line, and then another one a foot above that, and another one a foot above that. So, you know, the load water lines all appear beside each other in this view, right, as a curvature. In this view, the load water line is a straight line, and so are all the other water lines. But in this view, you have curved lines called the buttock lines. These lines are lines that are drawn uh, one foot from the center line of the boat, you know, and two feet and three feet. So every foot from the center line of the boat, you have a buttock line, which is straight in, well, all the buttock lines are straight in the um, half bridge view and the water lines are straight in the profile view. And uh, 
The water lines and the half grid uh, and the uh, buttock lines are straight in the plan view, but the frame sections are curved. The frame sections appear as straight lines in these other two views. So you're working one view against the other. And when you're lofting, you're trying to take dimensions and put them on the loft floor and draw your longitudinal lines in there and see if it's got any like little curvatures in it or any little imperfections that you don't want to be there. And then what you would do would be you would straighten out that kind of straighten out that curvature, not make it straight, but make it fair, make it nice and fair and then steal the dimensions off of there and put them onto the other views. So you're only going to work with the uh, table of offsets in uh, one view, basically. I'm going to transfer them in different views, but once I start moving the lines around to fair the shape of the hull, you know, I'm, I'm only after, what I'm after here is to get the sections of the boat every three feet. Every three feet, I'm going to build a mold that's the same shape as those sections on my drawing board. And I'm going to show you how to lift the lines drawings from the loft floor onto the pieces of wood that we're actually going to make uh, the uh, molds out of. So that's just um, a few things about lofting right there. You know, like I had said, the uh, lofting was not easy for me. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done my whole life. And uh, I'm 76. <laughs> I'm surprised at myself for wanting to try and do different things that I haven't done before at all. But I am attracted to different things like that, problem solving and different things like that. So, you know, this whole thing was attractive to me. I knew before I started how difficult it was going to be, but I was still attracted to it because it is problem solving and... Uh, it just makes you feel good when you, when you do something like this or once you finally accomplish it. I didn't feel all that great as I was going along doing it, but at this point I feel pretty good about it. And like I said, you know, we've got the uh, copied over drawn right here. This is what the loft floor is going to look like without any of the lines extending past where they belong. We're going to try to keep the labeling down to a minimum because... We need some labeling, otherwise you just look around an awful lot trying to describe one line from another. So I have to label like the buttock lines and I have to label you know, uh, the water lines and, and uh, you know, the mold sections and all those kinds of things. And uh, there's another set of lines in here on a curvature right here. These are dimensions that were taken from the diagonal lines that are in the, in the body plan. The whole idea of those diagonal lines is that's the best line that you can draw on your, on your board longitudinal in a longitudinal fashion because they intersect the frames at close to 90 degrees. This one's a little off right up here, the forward one. Then they start getting very much close to 90 degrees all the way down through this section, all the way down through, and then all the way down through the aft. So it was kind of an optimum position to put the diagonal line diagonal line in the body plan and uh, then once I've done that and I drew one diagonal I realized that the best way to fare the rest of it is to put a couple of more diagonal lines and I may even add another one before I continue often but the idea is uh, to use those diagonals as the primary lines to fare the hull.